All right, let's take a look at uh, chapter 12, you know, section 12.1. So we're going to start with what is a composite of functions. When we do, when we have two different functions and we combine them, basically, and th these are used uh, normally and in real life. For example, a $4 pair of blue jeans is on sale for 25% off. So I have something going on. If we purchase the jeans before noon, the retailer offers an additional 10%. What is the final sell price of the blue jeans? Now, most people will think, oh, 35%, you know, because 25% because it's on sale, they're going to take 25%. And because it is before noon, they're going to take another 10%. So that happens to be 35%. But it is not. It is not. What we do is we take, you know, considering 25%, we're just going to come over it and we're going to take the 25% first. And then on the new price, we take 10%. So like I said, if we think we're going to take 35%, we do 40 minus the 35%, which is 14. So 40 minus 14, we think we're going to pay $26. However, it is $40. We take away 25%. That gives us, gives us $30. From the $30, we take away 10%, which is $3 off, and that gives us $27. These amounts are pretty similar because the price of the blue jeans are $40. But if we buy things that are higher, I know I don't mean to make this an advertisement, but when you guys buy purses like at, at a coach or, or, you know, purses with, in, with name, with brand names, sometimes they offer these type of deals and people think, Oh, you know, they say sometimes, Oh, Clarence on 50% off, but today everything else is on 50 X 50% extra. And you're thinking, well, 50 and 50, that means the purse is free. And you go up to the counter and it is not free. I could say what they do is what we call compound or composite functions. Now, let's talk, we're talking about mathematics here. We're talking about algebra. So let's talk about in algebraic equations. Let's say I have a function. I'm going to use this. I'm going to use letters now to because I'm going to be using different different functions. So I'm going to use a letter to tell you guys which function I'm using. So let's say that function f. So f of x is going to be x to the second. But then I have another function g. g of x is going to be x plus 3. Now I want to do a composite function. I want us to find f of g of 4. So this little thing in the center, the little o, I call it off. So I, I'm going to read that as f of g of four. So let me even write what I just said. I said f of g of four. Now what we're going to be doing here, first the four is close to the g. In this case, I'm gonna do g of four. I wanna find out what g of four is. So g of four, I'm looking at the function of g, but notice how inside parentheses I have a four. Inside of parentheses here where it says g, I have an x. All that said was using the function g, we're going to use 4 for x. The value of x is going to be 4. So I'm looking at this as 4 plus 3, which is 7. So g of 4 is 7. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to say f of 7. Notice how g of 4, I said, well, g of 4 was 7. So I'm just going to do f of 7. Now f of 7, what this means is now I'm looking at the function f. Notice how the 7 is inside parentheses. So I'm looking at the value of x in this case is 7. So I'm looking at this as 7 squared, which is better known as 49. So I have to do one function first. And then my result, I have to plug it into the other function. So make sure here when you try it, solve for g of 3 first. We're using g. The value of x is 3. And then whatever you get, plug it into the f. For example, if I get the g of 3 is 9, so I'm just going to do f of 9. Your result in this case should be a 5. 
the answer at the end in this case should be 5. Now, let's find a composite function using something else. In the now, I'm just going to do g of f of 4. So first of all, I have to work f of 4. So f of 4 is 4 squared, which is better known as 16. So now, I'm just going to work g of 16. But remember, when I call it g of 16, that means I'm using the function g, the one that has a g, and my value of my variable is 16. So I'm looking at this as 16 plus 3, better known as 19. Notice how I did the f first, and then I did the g. I start with the one that is closest to the 4. A couple of sections, a couple of examples before, I did the g first because that's the one that was closer to the number. I did g, and then I, my result, I plug it into f. Here I did f, and my result, I plug it into g. Now you do these. These are your examples. And you should get a 1 for an answer. Now one thing I want to mention is... I had the same f and the same g in both of my examples. I don't know if you noticed that. I had the same f and I had the same g. On the first one, I did f of g of 4. That was my example 4. I'm mean, example 1. And I happened to get 49. On my example 2, I did g of f of 4, and I had a 19. Notice how I got two different results. So the order of operations does matter. We're going to start with the with the function that is closer to the number so here for example i'm going to do g of 2 first i want to find out what g of 2 is g of 2 remember i'm using the function g and my variable i said is going to be 2 so i have this as 2 squared plus 5. i know 2 squared is 4 plus 5 that's 9. So g of 2 is 9. Now I'm going to find out what is f of 9. Remember, I'm, pl I'm plugging into my function f, and now I'm saying that my variable, my value of my variable is 9. So I'm looking at this as 4 times 9 minus 1, because I plugged it into my function f. Now 4 times 9 is 36. 36 minus 1 equals 35. Now let's take a look at example B. I want us to do f of g of x. So the first one I'm going to do is g of x. So I'm going to use the function g. And I'm saying my variable is x. So I'm looking at g of x. So I get x squared plus 5. Not much I can simplify. I don't know the value of x. I just said x. So g of x is x squared plus 5. Not much I can do. Now, I'm just going to do f of x squared plus 5. Now, notice that what I got for g of x, I'm plugging in for in the function f. So what does that give me? That gives me 4. Now, x, I'm going to use a big parenthesis because in here I'm going to do x squared plus 5. And then my minus 1 at the end. Notice how f is 4x minus 1, but my variable in this case, instead of x, I have x squared plus 5. All right, well, let's get rid of parentheses. Let me distribute the 4. That gives me 4x squared plus 20, and then the minus 1 at the end. So here I will get 4x squared plus 19. Now, this thing, sometimes I will we'll be giving you this in homework. You know, we do f of g of x because this way I'm going to do f of g of anything that I want. I came out with the formula 4x squared plus 19, and that's going to give me the f of g of anything that I want. As an example, in question number C, we have, let's do the f of g of 2. Notice that looks like example A. But remember in A, I did g of 2. I got a 9, and then I did f of 9. 
However, here I'm going to do use the rule in example B. So remember how in example B I figured out that it was going to be 4x squared plus 19. Now my value of x is going to be 2. So I have this as 4 times 2 squared plus 9. I know I have to do exponents first. First I start with groups. Order of operations if you guys don't remember. Start with groups. Now the groups can be represented as parentheses. It could be represented in a fraction. The top there's a plus or minus or the bottom there's a plus or minus. That's also a group. Then the other after we do groups we do exponents. So I'm going to do 2 to the second, that's 4. So there's the 4 in the front, times 4 plus 9. Order operations after exponents, I do multiplication or division. If there's more than one operation, I start from the one on the left. So I'm going to do my multiplication. 4 times 4 is 16. Oh, this is plus 19. 16 plus 19. Lastly, I'm going to do subtraction or addition. All right, 16 plus 19 was that, 35? I know you guys might remember PEMDAS for, for order operations, but GEMS is another acronym for order operations. All right, now let's do... Example D. I'm going to do f of x first. So for f of x, I get 4x minus 1. I don't know the value of x. I cannot simplify. Now I'm going to do g of 4x minus 1. That means that I have 4x minus 1 squared plus 5. The 4x minus 1 squared, I'm literally going to write my two parentheses. And then plus 5. I'm literally going to write my two parentheses because it's easier to work this way. Let me distribute the 4x from the first parentheses to everything on the second parentheses. So 4x times 4x, that gives me 16x squared. 4x times a negative 1, that gives me negative 4x. Now let me distribute the negative 1 from the first parentheses to everything on the second parentheses. Negative 1 times 4x, that gives me negative 4x. Negative 1 times negative 1, that gives me a plus 1. And lastly, there's a plus 5 at the very end. So I'm going to get 16th x squared minus 8x plus 6. Combine like terms. Try some at home. This is what you should get.